Welcome to Academic Show Studio. In these very, very special times, we will give you a special edition of one of our live streams in collaboration with Loyal Professional. Yes, and this live stream will indeed be very special due to the situation with the coronavirus. All the models that we will be using here is pre-recorded, which means that they are from earlier live streams. But since we would love to give you some education and inspiration in these difficult times, we have digged into the archives and looked for what could we use. So we have been, for the last 29 or 30 hours, we've been working like mad to create some content that we can share with you live and pre-recorded. So it will be a total mixture. We will also, which is very unusual for us, be coloring doll heads. So we can show you some techniques as well. Since we're live streaming to all the Nordic countries, Norway, Sweden, Finland and Denmark, we will do this in English. So, all the work and all the dialogue will be English from our point of view, but if you have any questions, any at all, please don't hesitate to ask us. You can write them below in the comments or you can send us an email on info and we will try live to answer anything. If you're not comfortable with writing in English, you can do it in your native language. So just read it and finish Swedish, Danish or Norwegian and we will see if we can read it live if we can't, we will look at it afterwards and together with the L'Oreal technical team, we will answer you in your local language. This was all the details from a practical point of view. You will have the pleasure of looking at Kira and Sophia that will do the techniques in front of you and do all the explanation. I will not be on screen because I have to be away in a far distance, but I will be controlling all the buttons. And if you guys have any questions, maybe you will hear my voice because I will then ask the team so they can answer you guys live. So finally, and not, not at least, I will present to you with the two fantastic ladies, Sophia and Kira. Enjoy. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Kira, Kredemic. This is Sophie, Kredemic as well. Hello. So, um, well, thank you for joining us and let's have a good time, Miss Sophie. Yeah, Tell us what idea. you are doing with your beautiful model over here. My beautiful model for today has got a bleach in the front. So the techniques I'm going to show you today is the Kredemic signature color, which is called the Kredemic bleed. And that's, this is what I'm going to do at the front. So this is the classical version and then on the nape I'm going to do a salmon friendly version. So I'm going, going to start at the front and then I'm going to do the nape afterwards. So here working from the, the thing about the cryodemic bleed is where you go from a bleach fading down to a bleed. And the bleed is made with a really highly pigmented color. Today using the pulp riot, fireball red and fading with the clear. So this is what I'm going to start out by doing now. So to get it evenly shaped here, I'm going to take both my sections and working in a straight line here. And then I'm going to start my first application. So doing the bleed here is starting at, at the first section and working everything down to the same area. Just gonna move And that's around. where, Miss Sophie, the precision comes yeah, along, yeah? Precisely. Mm -hmm. So are you all able to follow and see here where I'll start taking my first section, taking a piece of foil here, mm -hmm. then starting applying my clear at first, and clear means? It, this is the color which has no color. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I can use it for fading. Mm -hmm. so, so no pigments. No pigments mm -hmm. in this one. And then taking my fully pigmented. Fireball uh, red. The fireball red. Oh, it shows, huh? Here. So this is the full color as you see. Mm -hmm. Applying this at first. Beautifully. So fully pigmented here. Then taking my brush here and then doing the fade by fading these two together here. So it's the fading between the clear and the highly pigmented color 
the red one that gives you the fade. So doing your... That's amazing already. There. Yeah, I love these highly pigmented. Yeah. You can already see the, the feeling of the, of the blend, blend and bleed here. Exactly. All right. So, then I'm going to take... And so very easily to see, I mean, the result already yeah. because you, as you say, you have the, the pigments. Yeah, so and that's a good thing about working with the already um, developed pigments. Yes. Because yeah, I can see where the fade is. Yeah. Which leads me to the next question. Would you be able to do that with, uh, let's say, you know, the other brands like Masherelle or the Inoa or for instance the Dierichas? No, not in this one, not in the original bleed. Because there we have to see what's to going be, on yeah, within like the bleeding. It's like a painting, so mm -hmm. I have to be able to see the way I work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, but I know. Yeah, yeah. but in the salon friendly version in the yeah, back, yeah. where that we will get back to, yeah. there you can use every type of color. You know, oh. Masherel, Richesse, okay. whatever type of color you want to work with. So two interpretations of the bleed. Yes. A salon exactly. friendly one. Yes. And exactly. then the uh, the more academic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The original one. Oh, the original but one. But it's really good to have the Possibility to do a salon friendly as well because of course the one that I'm doing now mm -hmm. takes more time mm -hmm. than the salon friendly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And so you keep on doing your sectioning. Mm -hmm. Just go through the same amount of hair within one section. Yes, precisely. Yeah. And then, so now I have my base mm -hmm. here and then I'll on top of this, just take the next section, still having small sections. Yeah. So everything is going to be seen in the same way. Uh -huh. And working to the same place. So I won't take new foils, mm -mm. because if I start to do this, I'm, then I'm gonna lift the fade off, and we don't want that. So it's a solid shape. So yes. if we have to transform it into uh, the way of speaking, cutting-wise. Yes, it's the cradling system. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's the it's a solid shape that mm -hmm. we do in the. In You're the creating well. just by doing it with the colors. Exactly. Oh yeah, that's nice. So it's a good thing that you can actually use the cradling system and the way of thinking, both with cutting and also with the coloration. We always do that when we when we do our diagnose within the cut and color. Exactly. So very very interesting to use one system. Um, and so much easier to work with one system aligned to both cut and color. Yeah, exactly. Because using foils and, as you said, you know, using new foils all the way up, mm -hmm. you're kind of building up mm -hmm. exactly. a color-like effect. And that's just a, another technique, so you can do it. I was just about yeah. to say that, yeah. yeah. You, could, uh, you could definitely go with that technique as well. It's just a different way of, of exactly. doing a... Yeah. Uh, and that's going to be so much more you know, uh, faded, mm -hmm. where by using this technique, you do have this solid red rock exactly. running through the external outline. Precisely, yeah. the strong line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Very nice. So this leads me, do you want any, you know? It's good. Yeah, comments, yeah. yeah. We'll for get now. back. I will now explain my colors for you using three different colors. Um, one, which is the color you see right here, is a mascheron and it's a mixture of the CC, which means Mashable Cool Color. Um, and it's a 911, 911, in a mixture of a Mashable Glow, and it's an 028. So equal amounts of the colors in a ratio one to two with a 9%. And then going into the next one, the second color, which is a Richesse from the Dear Richesse. And it's a mixture of the 412 and a mixture of a 723 equal amounts using the Vol 20. Going into the third color, which is the one you see right here, and it's a 723. And then on top of this, this is our triangular, which is going to be the blend of every one of the triangular shapes underneath. So for me to do this classic shape, um, I paid a lot of attention towards the sectioning. To start with the balance line, going from one ear to another. 
and then again shaping this rounded shape on both sides. Just turning my model around, doing it like this. And then to do this graduation, as you can see, going around the head shape like this, I've started my sectioning through the back area using a graduation all the way through, moving around the head shape back to the previous to really emphasize the length towards the front area. Moving myself around all the way back to the previous guide. Shaping and finally pulling everything back to a stationary guide. Still having the length towards the front area and then shaping in the outline. So now moving on to the top section. Creating an elongated shape. Having my guide running through in the middle of my top section. Creating a line, a guide, using my previous guide from the back. So in the center, pointing up the hair and creating a line throughout the middle. Following the head shape all the way and creating a rounded shape using a lot of tension there and then starting on my top section but now placing myself behind and then using my guide from the middle and now really again putting a lot of tension to the hair pulling everything back and then going from shorter into this longer piece falling on top of my side section and continuously working with the same position pulling everything back make sure that this is a straight angle and all the way back to the previous Using the same technique on the other side, now placing yourself on the other side to make sure that you have the right body positioning. Using the same guide and then pulling everything back, placing yourself with your fingers towards the scalp. And again, using the length throughout the elbow. I am now putting in a shape, which is going to be the front. Going from one direction 
into another. And now using the steam pot on the surface of the hair and this new generation of the steam pot leaves the hair both with heat and steam so it gives the hair the right shine and leaves the hair beautifully hydrated. As you can see, a beautiful surface, leaving the hair very, very shiny. It goes through the hair very easily using the comb to make sure you don't have any, any tangles in the hair. And then working through section by section. Using a little hairspray just to finish up the, uh, the style. Working with a little texture to see the colors and the shape working together. In this classic, both cut and color. Thank you. So this is my lovely model and uh, today I am going to work with a uh, commercial kind of color technique yet very strong within the, the way the color uh, are going to blend into each other. Uh, so I've done a little pre-work uh, because as Sophie mentioned we do have this system, it's called the Creademic system, um, which is always going to be aligned towards the head shape. But first of all within the Creademic system the balance line is so very important um, because in the balance line you divide the amount of hair uh, correctly and so in this case I do have the balance line running sorry myself or my model your model thank you you just have to be yeah visible. yeah <laughs> I will try to be so the balance line goes from top of the ear and across the headline or the the, the top of the headline and just across the other ear, yeah? So I do have my first section here, and as you see, I have a beautifully triangular shape with the tip inside, which we call internal, and this is external. Very important, because this is a triangular, which is going to blend into my base color. So this is my color one. And then if we turn this beautiful lady around, we have another square running through on her left side. So that means, again, just in front of the balance line, I have now a square. And by meaning square, I mean I have four corners. One, two, three, and four. And it's all the way down to her outline, yeah? So very important. So this is my color number two. My third section is my triangular shape running through on the top section, I'll just show it to you here. Yeah, you see it running through all the way. And again, the top pointing internally. And look how very high I've placed it on the top section. And again, very important to go with a rounded shape, just to really emphasize the head shape, because the place I'm working on it's so very important to have this blending technique. And this is going to be my combination color. And I'll get back to you what combination color means. But I'm going to start with this little section right here. Putting on my gloves now. So, Sophie, how are you doing? Really good, really yeah? nice here. You can see it's getting more and more Easy to see the fade as well. Mm -hmm. Also because the product, product is working, so mm -hmm. you can see the way it's beginning to transform the hair. All right, so on Malu, the model which is with me today, we have three different partings. We have the base color in the back. We have a 
section going from the side. It's easier for you to see from here. So we have a square that's the lowest part here. Square going all the way in the front area to just behind the ear on the left side. So the base color which we're working with here is a richesse, an 8.13 mixed with a 0.11 with 15 volume. Um, yeah, so this is our base color. And the section in the front is, still, is also a richesse with a 15 volume. And it's, it is an 834 mixed with a 0.24. So this is the front color here. And on the right side, we're working with the Macheral 10.5.1 and mixed with the Glow 0.01 with a 9%. So here we want to lift the side. So we have in the, in the side here, we have the lighter part. And when we have the section from the top, we'll still have some coverage from the, for, from, um, the coverage tones in the front here. So a really, really good mixture. When we do our partings, if you look straight down, Malou, a lot more, yeah, perfect. <laughs> you can see the rounded shape on the head here. The reason why we're doing the rounded shape here is to make sure that the hair blends evenly. So always, as the way we're working with the sections in the haircuts that we do and the partings, we do the same here in the way that we think about um, sectioning for the colors. So always following the head shape so we have a good integration of the different colors making sure that I have the right amount of product in the hair and always making sure, you can look up again, Malou, and always making sure that I do a proper line in the front so we don't have any strange looking front sides and in the back as well. And always making sure to have some foils so we don't let the color get um, dried out. All right, so first section is the balance line, going from the crown section to the back of the ear. Next section is from the balance line to the temple area. Go working above the crest line, because we have a lot of hair, so to make sure that we, it doesn't get too heavy on the sides. Working from that um, section and line, going to the back side of the occipital bone, making a triangle at the top. So, making three small layers, starting with a graduation, an elongated shape, and an elongated shape. The triangle is as, made as a di small disconnection to build up the rounded shape of the profile. Top section, taking the length from the triangle, using that to make a new guide, and then working all the way to the front towards the fringe area. Now, using my machine to do the final touches on my exterior line here in the back side, switching from the machine to the to my scissors, so I make sure to still get the rounded and head hugging shape because if I only use the machine it gets too straight in the line. So using both to make the real good shape here. Color looks beautiful. We have the three different colors. The copperish one in the front and then this more biscuity feeling at the back and then the really really beautiful beautiful blonde one on the sides. Still being and having a good integration integration, because we have used the rounded shape in the partings. Here we can see the copper tone on the side as well. And it makes a beautiful, beautiful way to see the full length of the color because we had the isolated sectioning on the sides. 
So here working in this beautiful color symphony, starting to make my fringe, starting from the front line here. Do look on, close your eyes. Perfect. Working in layers, so I make sure to be able to, to see my guide all the time. Lifting the hair with my scissor, close scissor here, and working forward so I don't remove the brow. So being able to see that it's straight and more of a lifted shape on the sides. All right, so here is the beautiful colors, as you can see, having the three sections on the front and the, and the side. So you can see the coverish one is there, and the blonde one underneath, having a really, really beautiful collaboration within the blonde, the copper, and the base tone here. That's more like a biscuity feeling. So, to recap the, co the color recipes, is the copperish one here, is a Richesse 834. 834, and the 0.24 with the per peroxide 4.5%. Um, yeah, so this is the copperish one. Then we have the base color that's still working with the richesse, having an 813 and a 0 0.11 with a 4.5%. So this is the richesse. It has a developing time of 20 minutes. That's really good when I collaborated with the Machiral that it has a developing time of 35 minutes. So starting putting on uh, and applying the mascherelle at first and then the recess afterwards because then it'll even out and the color will uh, be ready at the same time. So the last one is the beautiful one on the side here, which is a mascherelle. That's a 10.5.1 and the glow um, 0.01 in a beautiful mixture with a 9% peroxide. Really, really beautiful, and you have these three so lovely colors that really, really work nicely together to get the beautiful shape of the haircut as well. So if you, I mean, this would be a little easier to to tell your model or your client to, to put <laughs> your head a little, you know, in the right direction. But anyway, the way I apply my color when I do my little sectioning, it's always to do the outlines, which means if it's a triangular shape, I'm applying color all the way. And to make sure that the product is applied evenly without her ears. Not without her ears, but without touching her ears. And then going all the way through so make sure that I have my product evenly. Hey guys out there, if we have a little pause on uh, this live stream, we will be straight back. It's just because the internet, as Mark said before, is quite challenging. I think all the people in Denmark is on the internet, so stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. But if we should talk about bleach in the sense of still talking in the paintings, mm -hmm. um, then you should see the bleach in the same way as a white paper. So when you have the white paper and when you have the clean, even bleach, so even though this one is not as high in the level, it's still even. Um, and then thinking about that as having your white paper, so, for, so you're being able to do anything you want to. 
And it's not as fun to work on a piece of paper. There's a little gray, a little white, a little black, everything in between, because then it's gonna have an effect on the, th the thing that you're working with on top. So evenly distributed, all, always thinking about that to get an even result, to get an even finish afterwards. Make it make, yeah, it totally makes sense. That if, no matter on which kind of level you are, mm -hmm. you really, really need the evenness to have, um, to have whatever you are going to use on top of the bleach. Yeah, exactly. Because as we all know, in the hairdressing business and mm -hmm. the world, bleach is not like a final result. It's just like a process you're in, mm -hmm. having the hair or the depth, wherever the natural depth and level would be. Yeah, exactly. So it's just like a process to go in, in whatever kind of result you are, you're looking for, exactly. yeah? Exactly, the next <clears throat> level, yeah. Yes. So finishing up my first section, and always make sure that you have clean outlines, make sure that you do a favor within the color while it's, it, it's, uh, it's on the hair. So you put a, a foil on it, so make sure that it is on its place and you won't have any colors on the, on the lady's cheek afterwards. Moving on to my next section, and now applying my color two. And again, doing exactly the same as I did before. So having my section, just turning her around. And now using my second color. And again, always doing the outlines to make sure that my base color and whatever color I'm using within the sections are totally separated, which is so important. And of course, if this was a section with bleach, I would most definitely always use back-to-back -back folds. But now I'm using a color, a mascherelle color, and therefore I can apply it all the way through with the know-how of me using the right amount of color and the same amount of color each and every section. So starting with the outlines and then again, so very easily doing my section from underneath using my foils and applying color all the way. Yeah, okay, so finishing off here with the last last section here on top and then afterwards going to the section on the nape area. So just the last one here. So being consequent in what, everything that I'm doing, as Kira said before, with the application of the bleach and everything, it's so important that you do the same thing. So when you decide to have one direction, do the same every time on, on every, every section, yeah? But the reason for doing that, Sophie, Mm -hmm. um, you would you would really need to know. I mean, one thing is the shape of the hair, and as we talked about the system, mm -hmm. um, and by the system, mentioning the system, we mean we mean by placing whatever section totally correct and with the um, with the outcome uh, of the haircut as well mm -hmm. on whatever lady's head, because the placement is so very important. Mm, so it means the growth patterns, it means the outline, it means the color history. Everything that we know is, is on the behalf of what decision you do color-wise, yeah? Exactly. Would you say that as well? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Working with the mascherelle in one section and the base color is a Dia Richesse. This is the mascherelle 912 in a combination with the mascherelle glow point one eight equal amounts and then using a nine percent volume going into the base color it's a dia richesse working with a mixture of a 601 and a mixture with 0.11 equal amounts using the 4.5 the whole technique is placed on the head shape going from a narrow on my left side, going across the head shape into a wider panel 
as you see right here. The base color is applied right after on the rest of the head and then again working with a little section through the back area following the head shape all the way around and again with the same color as running through in the front. I love this shape. I love the texture and I love the way that the colors are blending into each other. The inspiration is a pixie haircut going through a section um, to create the loose detailing in the outlines using the, the hair and the graduation to follow the head shape and the two colors blending beautifully into each other. It's a dark brown chocolate color with a ginger outline going from the top section and all the way through the sides and as you see in the back as well to create the loose feeling and this very very feminine look. I love it beautifully. The Masherel Enforced is so very 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 exciting and I think that I mean Sophie you have had the pleasure of working with the Enforced at the Salon because yeah. I mean it's really really um, I mean, it's, it's, it's relevant for everyone, but, but having these, you know, greys mm -hmm. where you really want to have the pigments going into and have the, uh, the coverage of the grey, mm -hmm. it's very, very, very nice with the Enforced, yeah? Yeah, really, really good. So it's really nice. To would you, would you say, I mean, the difference between a Mascherelle, additional Mascherelle, the cool cover and the, the cool Enforced? So in between. Oh, not the cool Enforced, the, yeah. the Enforced. Yeah, in between. Cool cover and the normal mesh well. Okay, so in yeah. between yeah, having in between. having a bit more depth on the cool cover. On the cool cover. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And therefore it has yeah, so the pigments are even cooler on the on the cool cover. Yeah. And by saying cool cover, you mean also a bit darker within the pigments or it looks darker because it's cooler. So for the eye it's going to it's going to look uh, darker. Okay. All right. So now I've continued to the nape area here, as you can see. So my sectioning here is triangle. So internally, and the reason for that for that is to have it fade. So as we do when we do our partings in and sectionings for the haircuts, the same way you have to think about it when you do the color, as we talked about before. So having the diagonal shape, following the head shape then you will have the rest of the hair to have the integration because if I just made a fully straight triangle I wouldn't have the same effect and the same flow in the color. So this is why it's diagonal lines and rounded still even though it's straight on. So you can see maybe if I turn a little more you can see it's still rounded in the shape. So we have the base color here fully the same thoughts as the picture Mark showed before, where the bleed in the back is, set, is um, separated in the center by the base color. So it's not just a section or an undercut, you could say, underneath that's going to have this color. It's divided in the center. So that's what gives it this really, really cool effect. So this is the salon-friendly version. Now I'm going to use a red color from Inoa. But you could you really use this technique as well. If you have a bob length um, and you have a really fine hair and you want to have it visually have more density of the hair, then you, I, if you have this uh, brown tone, you could go for a three natural height or you could go for a black. And then when you make this technique, then you're going to have much more of a visually higher density of the hair. So that's a really nice way to do it as well. So here you're going to have much more contrast. And again, being a little more controversial, but be able to transform it as well into the black. So you can use it with every, every type of color that you want to work with. Now I'm moving on to this last section. And this now is a combination between my color one and color two. So for instance, it could be, as Sophie did, a beautiful, really, really, really aggressive red um, in the front. And then again, going into a bit more lacy 
red, it could be a brown, it could be mm. a combination between yeah, red yeah. and brown. Definitely. This could be like a beautiful blonde color. This could be a beautiful brown color through this side. And now a combination between the brown and the blonde in this. So I'm using the same amount and the same color through this side and this side into the third bottle, yeah? So now working all the way in this direction. And that's just a technique that we have been using so many, many, many um, generations of colors mm -hmm. now yeah. because it works. And what we really realized is that creating a third color with color one and two, or maybe three and four, mm -hmm. is just the way that you really, really have the same kind of feeling going through the hair. So even though it's a, it's, um, it's a pretty aggressive combination or contrast within the colors, you can kind of align those colors in one combination going through the hair. So it's a beautiful way to do, as I said earlier, a commercial color, but yet again, very strong within the looks. It's just depending on what color you choose, and again, what peroxide you're using because peroxide is, is the whole um, a trigger within having a color, a color going on. So meaning different peroxides is that I could have used the same color just with a peroxide in a lower peroxide on this side and a really, really high peroxide on that side, same color. And then again with a third peroxide in the combination of it. So it's just really, really a matter of using not just the 100 different tones we have to use uh, or we have the, uh, the, possibility, the possibility to use and to work with but also to really realize how much a color and one color can change just by using a different peroxide. You know, I'm so much into what the colors, um, you know, the whole, the whole storytelling, the whole shine, the whole you know, the whole surface of the hair changes mm -hmm. by using colors the right way, obviously, mm -hmm. yeah? yeah? So uh, I prefer to do the colors and then getting inspired by the colors, mm. the placement of the colors, mm -hmm. um, to do the haircut. What about yourself? So, mostly I color first as well, but I think it can be quite nice to, to start with the haircut and then then make a color inspired by the haircut. Oh, yeah. right, yeah. So so the inspiration can go from both angles. Oh, yes, indeed. Also to to emphasize something in the in the haircut as well. And that's that's the other way of doing it, um, getting the inspiration. So I think it can be quite nice to, to start out, out with the haircut as well. So this is the salon-friendly version of the Creademic Bleed, as you see on this model. So I've been really looking forward to you seeing the finished version of the salon friendly uh, Creademic Bleed. So here you can see the two triangular shapes parted in the center by the base color. So having internally the tip of the triangular shape, having diagonal lines, the reason for that is to have the integration between the two sections and the two colors. The haircut here is made for it to help the color look even more integrated, but still showing more of the uh, different shades. So it's short on the side and then having more length at the back to emphasize the coloration. And you can really see here the beautiful way that it's still showing a little bit of the triangular shape underneath, blending beautifully. So this is a recap of today's color using two different colors and then the third one which is a combination between the two and what we see is I do have one little section running through on this side going and pointing towards the internal and all the way through to the external using a mascherelle color a favorite color called cool cover and it's a 10.1 and then with a mixture of a mascherelle glow 0.18 Further on, this would be my second application, all the way through, pointing again internally and all the way out to the outlines externally. 
which is a color, also a measurable color. Now using a 632 with a combination of a glow 0.28. My third section having a focus point as you see pointing towards the internal very very narrow and then following the head shape and again all the way through the outline externally and this is a combination between the two colors just a quick run through this is the final result within the cut and color so as you see this beautiful classic shape with a lot of different layers and graduation and going through the colors beautifully as you see three different colors a blunt piece running through going into this dark espresso very rich color and then finally this more chocolate color in the front area and this goes all the way to really really have this beautiful and so very natural blend of colors so this is our academy version of the creademic bleed as you see here So going from the clear fading down towards the highly pigmented red color at the, point, at the tips of the hair. So it's the blend with the, with the clear and the highly pigmented red that gives you the fade. All right, so here we see the beautiful finished version of the Creademic Lead. Really, really loving this fade and you can really see the beautiful way it's integrated with the base color and the yellow at the front. Here we see a vertical graduation. Working in a vertical graduation, you can still work really, really nicely for having a rounded and therefore feminine shape. So pivoting towards the ear to follow the head shape and to integrate it with the cut and drop that's on the sides as you see on the left and the right side. Color-wise, we have been working with this beautiful Inoa to emphasize the fringe and the heavy line. I love the way that this is, has got this little bit of a powdery effect that works really beautifully with her skin and with the whole feeling of, um, of the beautiful, beautiful shape that we see here. All right, ladies, so here you see the final results, cut and color. If we do have a profile, please. You see the beautiful shapes, you see the colors working into together, integrating and really emphasizing the shape of the head haircut. And then a back piece. And you do see the differences within the shape, the graduation, the beautiful rounded shape, the feminine silhouettes. And then again, a profile, please. And finally, you see the difference between one side to another. And yet again, you have the feminine shapes within being cropped, curly texture and beautiful glazed on the, on the outside of the, of the surface of the hair. And a front, ladies. And here we see the colors, the straight lines and the curly texture and everything working beautifully together, cut and color. So Sophie, thank you so much for spending time with me. And me as well. Oh, and we want to thank you every one out there, Finland, Norway, Sweden and Denmark, thank you for joining us. Bye for now. Bye for now.